Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hi, I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I'm Debbie. What I'm going to do is describe this 74-year-old female living at home, and Linda will talk about the services, the documentation, what's necessary to keep her on skilled services. Linda's a nurse and I'm a social worker. This is a 74-year-old female living at home. She's legally blind, still able to see, because even though you're legally blind, you still have a little bit of vision. Um, below knee amputation, as a result of her, she's diabetic. She's controlled on medication. She's doing well at home. She is taking her medication on time. She is managing well at home. She has a history of peripheral vascular disease and in the past has also had TIAs or transient ischemic attacks. She went into the hospital at her amputation site. She had an unstageable wound on her, stage two wound on her stump and then at the same time she developed an unstageable wound on her coccyx. Um, this happens to people, they're sitting, they're getting up, they're sh it's just the positioning, a um, number of reasons why people end up with wounds. And so she needed to go into the hospital. The doctor said to her, you need to be hospitalized, this is something that you need to get treated into the hospital. When she went into the hospital, they had to put her on insulin. Anybody with an infection, oftentimes who is a diabetic, their diabetes is out a little bit out of control, which is why she was put on insulin. And then she needed IV antibiotics for the infected wound. And she also needed to have the wound care team come in and look at her wound. She's going to go into the um, long-term care setting in a skilled service. She's going to require physical therapy for assessment and therapeutic exercise. Transfer and range of motion exercises will be part of the treatment plan. She's going to require occupational therapy for assessment of her ADL retraining. She cannot walk with her prosthetic device due to the stage 2 wound on her stump. She also needs a sliding scale of insulin. She was not on insulin at home. She was taking an oral diabetic agent. Now requires insulin to control the increase in blood sugars due to the infection. She's going to need wound care on the coccyx and on the stump. Um, education and training for injections and drawing up insulin is going to be very difficult due to her vision. They're going to have to work with her with a magnifying syringe and possibly the V&A services on her discharge, going home and helping her with insulin if it's still needed. She's going to have a modification of the prosthetic device down the road, which means a lot of services still need to follow. She'll need rehab to learn how to rewalk once all of these items take place. I believe that pre gimo she would have gone in to the long-term care facility. She would have been provided with this care. But I think the difference here is post GMO is she's not going to plateau in the long-term care setting rehab. She's going to need services to continue in order for her to go home. The VNA is going to have to take over. She's going to have to have continued programs for rehab and wound care. The wounds, probably an unstageable wound on a coccyx, chances are 100 days in the long-term care setting would not be enough to heal it. She may recover enough to go home before that happens, but she should go home with the VNA services, which would be provided under GMO. Previous to that, the VNA would come in they probably would do a few weeks of, of the wound care and monitoring the site of the stage two and making sure that she's taking her insulin. Now they're going to have to set up a maintenance program. 
and it would have to be viewed by a professional, a registered nurse, probably a physical therapist coming in. And the key to this is, when she's in the long-term care setting, documentation for Medicare was always important. If you were audited, you were turned down. When they asked for those notes to be sent in, they're looking at that documentation on the skilled care. And you need to be writing about the reason that they're skilled. At home, with the VNA, that same documentation is going to apply. You're going to need a doctor's order at home to continue those services. You're also going to need the registered nurse writing a detailed note on why the plan with the skilled maintenance is continued to be needed and what they're getting out of it. And if she maintains, that maintenance program has to stay with her. You still only get 100 days. But when you're back into that home care, that 60-day plan may take place when she is at home. So that's, with that case, pre and post GMO. So Linda, is, is, it, your, is it your sense that, that pre GMO this person would have stayed in the nursing home for the whole 100 days? I don't think they would have probably. They may have made the full 100 days, but I have a feeling that she probably would have gone home maybe around 60 days. And yeah. it, again, if she was HMO, she would have gone home sooner. And, if she, and, and post GMO, would, would the likelihood have increased that she'd be staying beyond those, first six, beyond those I, 60 I days? I think she would stay longer because the maintenance program would have to get into effect. A lot of education and planning with the family or the person at home with this person. And I think the same would happen with an HMO, that they're going to have to approve for the maintenance program. And that's where the difficulties come. And I know Deb, Deb has more comments on this. I just wanted to mention one thing. I, when CMS implemented this through their regulations, which once again came into effect in January, they did this. I was reading the regulations. I said to myself, oh, I get it, right? What they were trying to do was make sure this ended up being revenue neutral. So um, to make up for the fact that they were probably going to be spending more money on the post-GMO side, they increased the regulatory, requirement, the regulatory requirements in all cases, GMO and non-GMO cases. So, so at this point, in all cases, every time that, that, a, that a physical therapist, that a skilled person performs a service, they've actually got to document the condition of the patient up to that point, everything that was done, the reason why they felt they continue to feel that the ongoing skilled services are necessary, right? And in the abs absence of that documentation, CMS is going to knock them out, right? That's what th there was, it was a strange thing. I was really and saying to myself, Oh, wow, they're actually tightening up here. Right. right, and I'll just add one more thing. In the long-term care setting, I believe as working in a long-term care setting and going to rehab meetings and your Medicare meetings, I think it's going to affect the bottom line in long-term care because you always went for the top rug score to get them in the highest category that you could get them in um, to get the most that you could do. A maintenance program in Medicare is the bottom rug. So if you've decided that this person is going to go on a maintenance program, you're taking a big cut in that rugs category to get them ready to be discharged. And I think you run into the same problem right now. The VNA services aren't sure what to do with the gym out rules. And they have been turning people away until you bring it up and explain to them that they can't. So their documentation, the bottom line is you're paying a professional to document, 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 as, as well as overseeing the maintenance program. And also, the physician statement is very important. Many physicians have nurse practitioners coming into the building. They alternate visits, or you'll have two or three nurse practitioner visits and then a physician um, visit. But CMS, and as you, go up, as, as you go up in these appeals, they are relying more and more upon the physician documentation. And if the physician is not writing a note, then it, you can lose, the family can win, the facility can lose the appeal process. We've, see, we've heard this from some administrative law judges. Um, they are looking at only the doctor's documentation. What is the doctor saying about this patient? What are they saying about the wound in this situation? 
What are they saying about their need to be in a skilled facility and to continue rehab? That is most important. And that's new for the doctors. And as Linda also pointed out about documentation, you know, we all do the MDS is the document that everybody completes. And the MDS needs to change because that isn't really lined up with the GIMO, what GIMO documentation wants. And so, you know, having staff and nurse and physical therapy, they don't have the time to write lengthy notes, but that's really the important piece. And with this um, woman who wanted to go home, she needs to return to her baseline. People have to remember, you know, everybody used to say, well, the, she met her goals or these are her new goals. This is all she can do. Under the GIMO, she wants to return home. She wants to return to her previous baseline. That's a reasonable goal. It may take a long time to get there, but that's what GIMO is about, being able to stay at your previous baseline and to get there. And they want to make sure people are getting there. Any questions from anybody on case one? Yes. Um, continuation might be that they supervise someone else. Is that like a restorative aid? Mm -hmm. And does yeah. it have to be a true restorative program? Mm -hmm. and, okay. and, and can you repeat the question when you do the answer also? Okay, Linda, do you want to address it? Because I'm, doesn't You're asking if it has to be the skilled professional um, or can it be someone like a restorative aid following out the process? Right. Restorative, restorative can be covered as can in home care, a family member doing the treatment on the wound, but it needs to be, you have to have the reason for a skilled professional to put this program in place or you will be denied from Medicare. You have to show that you're overseeing it you're making sure that it's, the program is being followed, and you have to put the results of your professional input making a change. You have to write daily on home, and nursing home and at, at home care. You need to write why, especially if you're having, you have to have the physician write why they're skilled. They can't just write skilled care. They have to write skilled care for stage four wound to the coccyx um, for four weeks. And then he probably, in home care, they have to write frequent doctor's orders to keep them on skilled care. You have to go accordingly. So they need to be part of the group being told what you're doing in the maintenance program. And I know I used to have a trick of I'd give the doctor on the progress notes a plastic sleeve with the things he needed to talk about in his note because they have so many people in their mind. They, they go through, oh, it seems okay, but it's very important. You have to have specific documentation. And I think one of the biggest things, it's the unique condition of the individual and the complexity that keeps them skilled. The language you're using when you talk about GIMO cases versus not a GIMO case? Well, if we you have to identify a particular case in your home as No, GIMO I think applied, what it is is pre the law case, yeah. pre GIMO, yeah. you would tell people you've plateaued, we can't use it, you're, you're going to receive a letter, yeah. we're going to deny you your Medicare benefits because you, we can't get you any further. Right. You can't use the word you've plateaued. Because that was the rule of thumb. Everybody used games. it. Yeah. But most of the computer systems, and I may be wrong now because I've been out of it for a little while, wouldn't allow you not to use the word improvement or you could use, you cannot put a program in place that says maintenance under Medicare, even doing your MDSs. There just isn't the verbiage. Yeah. So it is going to be a little bit more difficult. But I, I really think that understanding and the new buzzword Debbie and I are hearing on the cases that we're going in on is the new baseline. They're not saying you plateaued, but they're using this word. They're now at a new baseline. But again, 
They're not putting them on a maintenance program to, pr to maintain or prevent deterioration. So what is a new baseline? So if you're gonna use that term, you need to back it up because it again is a violation of the people with the new Jimmo Sibelius law. You have a question? Have you found that Parkinson's disease, that patients with Parkinson's might be similarly with Alzheimer's? Yes, yeah, they're right? very oh, high up there. They're one of, one of the reasons, chronic illnesses, MS, yeah. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, um, all of the, uh, I, Lou Gehrig's disease, all of those things are people that were considered chronic. Yeah. So they were always at baseline, this is not skilled care. That's no longer true. So it was a great success for them. But now getting it to be carried out is the big problem.